Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Skulk Hollow. It's by Eduardo Boraf, it's by Keith Mahedja, and it's by Justin Foth. And it is a two-player game that takes about 40 minutes, and it's for ages 8 and up. In the game Skulk Hollow, it reminds me of the old classic game uh, Shadows of the Colossus, in which you're going to be trying to climb a colossus. You're playing as either a group of foxes, or a fox clan, attempting to climb a, co a colossus and defeat it, or you're playing as the colossus itself, trying to stomp out the foxes. It is a game in which you go back and forth, using action management to try and defeat the opponent's team or to defeat the opponent itself, the big fat colossus. If either team wins based on the victory conditions present, then that team is going to be the successful achiever of all grand winning and good stuff. And if not, their poor fox clan and or the colossus will crumble, crumble depending on uh, what team loses. Anyway, it's the basic idea of the game. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what you get in the game, what you can choose to play as, and how they all function. All right, let's go down below. So here we have the two-player game Skulk Hollow and everything included, so let's go ahead and talk about as much as we can here. There's going to be a bunch of different player boards, and the main ones to focus on is either your Fox and Heroes board, which is for one player, and then any of the Guardians, which is for the other player. No matter what one person is going to be playing as the Fox and Heroes, but what they get to select is what leader they want to have. So there's the King of War, the Princes of Tactics, the Prince of Guile, and the Queen of Blessings. So if this player selects the King of War, he'll simply take this card here, he'll also take uh, this one one here. This is going to be his special card, so we'll just go ahead and set it over here along with this Sentinel. You're going to start the game with these two cards here, and uh, this is basically your player reference. It'll tell you what you can do on your turn and whatnot. Place your two characters here, and based on your cards, it will tell you what fox resemble which specific characters. So in this case, the king with the crown, it's got this one here, and then this guy's little skull, the Sentinel, will be this here. If at any point in time this character passes on, then you're going to lose as the fox and heroes, and if these guys pass on, generally speaking, there's going to be something that happens for the bad guy. Uh, place the big guardian on this other side of the board here, and depending on which one you choose, you're still going to set them in the same space, but all the guardians have their own unique meeples, as well as their own unique board. In this case, here's one of the guardian boards right here. It's going to have health, as well as a track which the foxes are going to move across. I'm going to be climbing up this guy, trying to knock him out, doing damage to him. Each of the different uh, guardians, as well as the fox heroes, will have their own unique deck here, in which case you're going to make sure you shuffle these up, and it will tell you how many cards you start in the game in your hand to begin the game with. Up here in the top left-hand corner, along with the guardians too, this fox and heroes are going to have five, and Grack over here is going to have five as well. Three actions for the heroes, and then two actions for the guardian here, but that will differ depending on the type of guardian you're using. After that, you're going to take away all these extra leaders, you're not going to be using these so this was a game because you went ahead and chose the king and then you can choose if you want how to how you want to use these bones here these bones can be used as extra actions for a player who may or not, may not be lower skilled than another player so for instance if you think the fox and hero is not necessarily as good as the guardian player is going to be then you can give him one two three or up to six different additional actions that they can use uh, during the game when they choose to have additional actions Otherwise, these will turn into ancient relics if you would like to use them as an expansion. You'll shuffle this expansion deck. You're going to give a cache or cachet to each of the players, one for the heroes and one for the guardians. Uh, and then you're going to shuffle this deck up. And whenever anybody takes the prepare action, you will flip over one of these cards here and place... Yeah, this is a town hall here. Place one of these guys down on the specific area which it tells you to place. There can never be more than one in a space, and they can't be placed if there is uh, heroes in that specific area. But the Guardians will get for each two they spend, they'll get one action, and the heroes for each one they spend will get one action. So you can choose to use this or not. If you don't want to use it, then you're just going to go ahead and take these away. And if you don't want to give anybody a benefit, you can take these away as well. So basically, depending on how the skill level all the players are, will determine whether or not you're going to be using those. These are basically your... Uh, these are energy boosts, basically. They're, this is the pool over here. Whenever you gain them, you'll place them over here. Guardians may or may not have them. This specific one, Grack, does not. But the Fox will always have them. And at the end of the turn, they're going to be moved from one space to the next, being placed in these little areas here, which can give each of the characters additional actions on the next turn. Very, very useful. There are four total guardians. You have Grok over here, and then you're going to have the Apo Apoda, you're going to have the Raptra, and then you're going to have Tanthos, or Tanthos. Uh, and they all have their own unique abilities, their own unique style, and things that they can do. They also have their own unique player boards. Each one of them is going to have their own unique type of health, as well as how you're going to get across them. And remember, you're going to start from the 
bottom and you're going to follow the lines to choose where to go. And the way to beat them is to simply remove all of the health from all of the spaces on the board here. Uh, each of the Guardians have their own unique win conditions. So for instance, uh, the Grok over here, he actually is going to win the game if he defeats eight Foxen units. The, so whenever you defeat a fox and hero, you're going to move this little tracker from 0 to 1, 1 to 2. If it ever gets to 8, you're going to win the game. And the foxen are actually going to win if they can defeat, like I said, all of these spaces here. You'll be placing these little green hearts on them whenever you do damage to them. Okay, so that's pretty much everything you need to know. Each of these boxes is going to have the components for each of the guardians. And there's little stars in the boxes to indicate the difficulty or challenge level for each of the different types. And they all have their own unique meeples and cards and decks and all that good stuff. So we're just going to use the basic grok here. Okay, so the board's pretty much set up. We've got the damage for the heroes, the damage for the guardians, and then the energy pool over here. And each player is going to go ahead and draw their hand limit of cards, which just so happens to be five to start the game off with. So one, two, three, four, five, and make sure your decks are shuffled. And the Foxen are always going to go ahead and start the game off. And they already have, luckily, the King of War here and the Sentinel to start. And now they've got cards in their hand. They could be these character cards here, or they could be these melee or gain power, or energy, whatever you want to call them, missiles, basically letting you move around the board here. If you want, let's say that your hand was something unique, something diverse, and we'll go ahead and give it something like this here, so that we have a good uh, amount of cards in your hand that are different, you could go ahead and play these. You get three actions, and your actions are based down here, and you can choose between uh, the two different actions on each of the cards, but you can only perform one of them. So one action could be to play this knight here. If you play the knight, you're going to go and look through these stacks here, find the matching knight with the corresponding symbol, which is going to be this one here, and place it down. If that happens to be a monster, that you can have to place it on one of these two areas as well, so you can kind of choose, and it shows you where you can place base on the uh, colored territory of the map. Uh, additionally, you might be able to move. So for instance, scatter here, if you played this card, uh, you would go ahead and discard it and you'd move one of your units based on where it tells you to move. And if it tells you to move in a diagonal way, you'd be able to move diagonally. If it tells you to move left, right, up or down, you can move. Some of them will allow you to move, some of them won't. Uh, and then of course you have melee, you have the missiles, and then the gaining powers. If you play to gain power, which would be your last action, you take this and put it in your pool, and at the end of your turn you'd move this over to one of the guys that could currently occupy one of those spaces. And then it would be the next player's turn, in which case you would go ahead and draw up to your new hand size of, I probably should shuffle this technically, of five cards and make sure that only you see those cards in hand. And then of course, here's how the Guardian works. The Guardian functions exactly the same way, but only gets to do two actions as opposed to three, but different Guardians will function differently. And Grak has some cool stuff as well. He can move, he can throw, he can mend, he can swing, and uh, he can also, he has this really wild thing here, which he can also do gaze. And it tells you the actions on them. It tells you when you do damage, uh, what areas in which they take damage based on little red indicated squares. Throwing will allow you to throw people off of you because eventually these guys are going to actually go on to this colossus here stomping people will actually make them spread out mending will let you heal yourself and preparing will let you discard a card from your hand that you may or may not want most likely you probably, you probably won't want and it'll let you draw two new cards if at any point either of these decks run out you're simply going to shuffle them and then you're going to draw that many cards until you have your full hand size at the end of your turn as well as whenever you draw from the prepare action and that's pretty much the game. Uh, there's some interesting aspects here. Like for instance, I could do my one action, which lets me do a ground, uh, gain ground. I can move any space I want. And I'll move that space right there. And then um, based on this here, I, can, I can't I can hit anybody with my swing or my gaze. Oh, I can, I can hit over here. If I had a gaze, which I do, I have one gaze. I can then go ahead and read this and it says, do a damage, uh, do one wound to any hero in a surrounding ground space that shares a side with Grax ground space. And so these would be these shared areas. So it would be one of these four areas here. In which case I do one damage to this guy here and put one heart on him. Okay, so I did my two actions there. We'll go ahead and discard these cards, draw up to five cards cards and then the foxen will once again go they've got their hand of cards here so let's go ahead and show you how how it works to uh to jump onto a character so let's see if i have a move i don't so i'll go ahead and just randomly pull one out here so i can show you how it works so if i had this card in my hand and i played it i could move this guy here i could then also go ahead and use a leap 
That would be my second action, and I can leap onto him. And when I leap onto him, I basically will be placing my guy on this board here, and I can place it right there. And as a next action, I could play a melee, and a melee will let me hit these spaces here based on where I am at. So that would do one damage. If at any point these spaces get filled with damage, then that specific ability will not be able to be used by that specific Colossus and or um, Guardian until he mends that area. If I were to play a leap card again, I could leap from one area to the next, and then one area to the next area, and I could continue my assault on this guy here. And the only way he's going to be able to get my, my little fox in off of him is when he throws them, and when he throws them, he could throw them off anywhere on the board. And like I said, basically pretty simple. If you can do damage to all the spaces on the uh, Guardian, then you're going to win the game. If the Guardian can knock out, the Guardian can knock out eight of the Fox, and before that happens, then the Guardian's going to win. Uh, all the Guardians have their own unique abilities, and of course, all of the Fox have their own unique leaders with their own unique abilities. For instance, the last thing I'll talk about is this specific guy here, the King of War. Uh, if he if he perishes, he is going to lose the game. This specific player is going to lose the game if just this one guy gets gets done for. However, he has a unique ability, and that unique ability says that uh, if he is ever in a space with another character, he cannot be targeted or damaged. So that is true. Right? That rings true for these areas here, as well as on this board here. And remember, it's based on the spaces. So in this case, I could have three fox and on this one here. I could have two on here, one on here, and then two over here. And that's pretty much the game. A Skull Hollow, trying to go around and either defeat the Guardian or defeat all the fox and heroes with your specific Guardian. Okay, let's come up and talk about it. So let's go through some Skulk Hollow caveats. And the first one, as I made a goof, all leaders function that way, in which if a leader is on a space with another character of, of a fox type, then they're untargetable and will not be hurt. But the differences in leaders are, are are there. So for instance, like this Princess of Tactics here, she will have the ability to put little cubes on her. She's got less health, but she has an ability that lets her uh, spend one power to allow a bandit hero unit to take an, 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 uh, an available action. Or the Guile Prince, uh, spend one power to retrieve any one card from the discard pile. And then the queen allows herself to heal, but she gets one less of these little power areas than the king, who has the most stamina stats but no ability so all the different characters here there are four of them have different abilities and whatnot that will function differently in the game uh, and then of course you've got the four guardians here grac apata raptra and thanthos and they are definitely different their character boards are different in which you're going around as a fox and trying to defeat them some abilities are easier to defeat than others and not only that but they all have their own unique actions that they will be taking throughout the game as well as win conditions for instance uh, this guy here as soon as you defeat eight or nine foxen eight foxen you win the game uh, this one over here controls the weather and its objective is to remove all characters from the ground and then you've got this guy here which uh, he's gonna be placing tentacles down on the board and if all of his tentacles are placed he wins and then finally the last one which he's trying to collect all of his runes that are on the ground the foxen are trying to stop him from doing that and basically defeat them before any of them complete their objectives and that's the basic principle of the game they all play vastly different though and they're very unique in how they function and there's definitely a skill increase as you play the harder difficulty one so if you're playing uh, as a newbie maybe you'll have that pl that player specifically play who's new as the foxen and you might want to play a more challenging character because i would say grack is probably the easiest character to play by far it's very simple as to how he functions you're drawing for the deck your objective is to go around smush throw smush 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 and accomplish your goal before you basically crumble into a thousand pieces this game has the best miniature uh meeples uh the little customizable meeples i've ever seen I am a huge fan of them. They are extra thick. In fact, I think they're even double thick. They look like tri maybe even triple the thickness. These guys are very large. They are very beautiful, and they could be chucked across the room, and they're not going to uh, get damaged. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to chance that, but I'm fairly certain that's how it would be. And they all have their own unique. If you see over here, it's probably hard to see, but they have their own unique little extra meeples that function with them. They feel big and scary in comparison to the foxen, right? This is the guardian, and this is the cute little fox. And having to deal with this is very difficult. That's why you need a whole bunch of them. And there's probably like 10 or 8, eight, eight to 10 foxes that you'll have to deal with these monsters while you're going through your deck. Uh, there is some challenge to it because specifically there's going to be times where you're going to want a specific card which may or may not come and you're going to need to rifle through your deck. And while that happens, you'll either be crumbling or you'll be getting smushed depending on what character you're playing as or, or team you're playing as. And so there is a little bit of that like, oh, I want to have this and I can't have it because it's just not there yet and I need 
to go ahead and already use this ability. Now I want to mend a bunch, but I can't because I, have, I no longer have any mend cards. Uh, and, and so there's going to be that frustration, but it's really your fault because you're the one who chose to use the cards when you did, and now you have to wait until you refresh. And you can go faster through your deck if you want, but it's going to be at great cost because you'll lose actions. And sometimes actions uh, at, at loss are, it's okay to push so you can get the cards you need again back. Specifically, if you can't do certain actions because as the, basically as the Guardians go, once their board is filled up, like for instance, if Gaze gets filled up, he can't Gaze anymore until he gets mended. Or throwing, if he can't throw, the Foxen can run around rampaging all over his board, doing as much damage to him as possible, and so on and so forth. So you get the idea, there's just a limitation as to how, you know, how you're playing as the Guardian. You're just trying to keep yourself stable while accomplishing the mission. I have a lot of fun with this game. It's very competitive, it's very back and forth, and very, very easy to understand once you get it down. It probably took me like five, six minutes to really grasp the full concept of the game, and each type of character how they are played with some exceptions based on the more difficult or more challenging guardians to play uh overall i really like this game it is really well done artwork it's really beautifully crafted miniatures it's got a lot of replayability because there's so much mix and match between the guardians and the fox and what characters you're going to select and how you're going to select them and where you're going to go and what your strategy is going to be that i doubt you're ever going to play through this game fully with all the different combinations i think for those competitive couples or uh groups uh, of two people <laughs> groups of two people who enjoy a more uh back and forth strategic action management game you guys are going to really dig this game it is two players though which does limit the amount of players that can play the game so in a bigger group it's not going to work and the game does last about 30 to 45 minutes it is quick it is uh, simple and you can go into the next game rinse and repeat and we did that countless times i think if you like two player games and you like a competitive game that has action management this is definitely one i would suggest checking out i really really had a lot of fun with the game skull hollow and i'm pretty sure you will too and if not you at least have all these really really cool miniature meeples <laughs> Yeah, they're good.